The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. I am back. You are comfortably zoned with me, the zigzag man in Alameda, California, right across the bay from San Francisco, across the moat from Oakland, in the northern part of what I consider to be the best state in the union, tied with New York, maybe Massachusetts. Representing Massachusetts go. today is... My buddy, my Goomba, my friend, Jerry Feitelberg. How are you, Jerry? Oh, I am doing well, Ralph, a fellow Alameda, although I haven't uh, been to Alameda too much since the uh, pandemic started. Uh, I've been uh, with my lovely island down here in Atherton. And, Which is uh, on the peninsula of the peninsula. In Northern California, absolutely. Yeah. A- yeah, Atherton is... 30 miles 30, south. 30 miles yeah. south. Kind of a ritzy joint. Willie Mays lived there for a long time, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, and Steph Curry bought a house here for 31 mil, not too far ooh. away. He got <laughs> a bargain, 31 mil. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, um, literally $31 million per house. Yeah. I mean, that's well, uh, yeah, it's a ton of money. But it's a ton of money. We're right, we're right in the heart of Silicon Valley. We're, uh, uh, I'm not. Isla's house is not too far from Facebook and all the building that they've done. Their headquarters down on Bayfront in Menlo Park. They put up building after building after building. They employ. They're going to eventually employ over thirty thousand people in Menlo Park. And there'll be more people working in Menlo Park than live in Menlo Park. But that's, well, that's one company. Google, Google and Mountain View employs thousands of people. Uh, Apple and Cupertino, uh, you know, these companies uh, just make nothing but money for uh, for their investors and employ hundreds of thousands of people. I think Apple employs 123,000 people worldwide. Yeah. Just amazing. Gives, gives you an example of how much money there is in California and how the tech, high tech industry has not suffered one bit. The, first of all, they can telecommute. Um, this is just, uh, for them, it's wonderful. Let me ask you for the United States of America, if Trump gets elected, is there a chance that California might want to secede from the nation? Great idea, I, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, California is the fifth largest economy economy in the world, all by itself. Right. They've got the national. More. They've got the national guard for defense. They could buy yeah. all kinds of weapon weaponry. Why put up w- with the country? Like, if Trump gets reelected, you've got the next three Supreme Court nominations are going to go to him. So yeah, you got to sure, figure, yeah. you got to figure the the face of this country, the United States of America, will be forever changed for fifty years. This is what's yeah. what it's going to be. What you see with with Barr and the you know, taking the Constitution and throwing it in the toilet. It's going to go on if this guy's reelected. I say, secede. You've got the brains in California. You've got the money in California. And you, um, I mean, it's, it's the only thing I can think of. Because we, as, as people living here, we can't leave the country. There's nowhere to go. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, what, what's kind of interesting is that is we have this antiquated electoral, electoral college system. And when you look at it, a vote in Wyoming is three times more valuable than a vote in California. That doesn't seem right. 
because of it. So if California assist, well, if California stays in the union, another uh, thing that you can do. Remember, there was a movement to uh, split California into about six or seven different states, and that would cause California would, by doing that, would have better representation in the electoral college because they'd have more senators and more electoral votes than probably Wouldn't it be simpler? Not. Wouldn't it be simpler to change the system to, um, from electoral to sure. popular? What's uh, stopping sure that? Be, Who, a con- what is? A, con- a constitutional oh. amendment. Oh, that little thing. Um, yeah, you have to have, what, 75% of the uh, states have to have to ratify it then it has to go be approved by the Senate and the House. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a long, convoluted process to get a constitutional amendment. There are only 27, and the document is, uh, what, 225, 240 years old, something like that. And it's the guiding principles uh, that we have. We had the Bill of Rights, uh, which was the first 10 amendments, and then the, and that was came really early in, in the country, and then only 17 since since that time, since that time, so yeah, it's tough to get a, a, an amendment uh, through the. Through hey, hey, Jerry, the, off the through. subject a little bit. Um, last time yeah. we spoke, you were in the process of reading Mary Trump's book on Donald. Yeah, you had just started it. Can you give us a synopsis of uh, what hasn't come out, um, what they didn't publicize when they released the book, and uh, oh. something that amazed you? Uh, after all this time, it's tough to be amazed by uh, the lack of a bottom in this guy's. Uh, how low can he, he go? Uh, give me some excerpts right. from the, from the book. Well, we know we know a lot about Trump. We, we we know that he has no no empathy. We know that he doesn't uh, he doesn't have a sense of humor. We know that he was trained by Roy Cohn that if you if you attack him or you criticize him, he goes after you tenfold, and he he wreaks vengeance on on everybody. Uh, he, uh, I, I don't know too much. I, I, I what I learned was that his father was uh, was a businessman worked worked six days a week, probably twelve hours a day, all business. Uh, they, uh, his grandfather wanted his oldest son, uh, Freddie Jr., uh, to be in the business. But uh, Mary's father, Freddie, just didn't have the knack for business. He That just wasn't his thing for, for real estate. Uh, Freddie served in the Air National Guard. He became a, a, a jet pilot for TWA. He took six months of training. And be, he was flying... Uh, Jets cross country from Boston to Los Angeles uh, years ago. Yeah, but Fred's Fred's problem was booze. He 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 became a, an alcoholic, and that ruined him. And uh, Donald took up the the real estate business. Donald became the fair haired boy from his father. His father used to dr- dress in a three piece piece suit. With a with a long tie, just like Donald wears now, except that Donald doesn't wear a three piece suit. And yeah, he can get into that third piece. Yeah, and at this point, and and, <laughs> and they uh, they when when uh, Freddie died at the I think he was forty two or forty three when he died from uh, cirrhosis of the liver, alcohol abuse. Uh, the the family redid the will, so instead of there being five shares when old man Trump died, there were four shares. And so the money that Freddie would have inherited would have gone to would have gone to Mary and her brother. Well, mm. that didn't happen. And uh, Mary's brother had a son that was very sick, and they. Uh, and the Trump organization paid the health care costs for them. But I think that uh, the brother did something that he shouldn't have done, and they they stopped making the health care payments for the kid. They had no health insurance. And uh, Mary's 
Mary's nephew, who was uh, her brother's son, had health issues, and they got no support from the Trump organization. They were cut off. And, you know, she, the family was quite dysfunctional. They lived in Queens in a beautiful, beautiful mansion in Queens. But they, they just, they just do not. He does just does not get what's going on. He lives in his own reality, yeah. and uh, yeah. and whatever you hear about him being a con man, being unfit for president, being and uh, being a narcissist, uh, they're all true. They're all true. And uh, Mary's aunt, her aunt Mary Ann, who was who was a judge on the federal court, uh, didn't think much of uh, Donald's uh, intellectual capacity. So yeah. that's what I learned from the book. And I just finished reading Michael Cohen's book, Disloyal, which was interesting. Wow. And, uh, Anything Cohen, of substance in that? Well, C- Cohen learned the hard way. Cohen, Cohen was, a, was a fixer for, for Trump. Uh, Cohen was doing quite well on his own. He he had a, he, he was a lawyer, and uh, he he got to know Trump because he bought apartments in Trump's building, uh, Trump Park Avenue, and then another one in near near the United Nations, I think. And he invested in the apartments, and they had value. And one of his cases, how he got into the taxi medallion business, is that. He represented a guy who had 50 taxi medallions, and the guy had these legal issues. And he got um, they got for payment they got the 50 taxi medallions, which were worth a lot of money in New York City. Oh, so yeah. he was doing he was doing quite well on his own. Uh, Trump called on him, and he did some work uh, for free for Trump. Can you imagine for free? And he learned all about Trump. Trump. Uh, in the, the third or fourth job, Trump asked him, what's your rate? And he says, well, I work for this company, and they get $750 an hour for my time. And he says, oh, I don't pay I don't pay rack rates for lawyers. So he was trying to stiff them or cut them down before they even started on a, on a, on a fee basis. So anyway, <laughs> he learned then, and he learned how to, when he was a fixer, he learned what Trump wanted. And he, he would take care of it. We learned that you remember the Stormy Daniels case and the Karen McDougal case. Well, <clears throat> the uh, in the Karen McDougal case, <clears throat> National Enquirer paid one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to buy the story from Karen McDougal, and then they killed it. It was called Catch and Kill. And Trump had worked with David Pecker at. Uh, at uh, National Choir over the years, they can they they looked at all the different stories that they can plant in, in there, true, not true, whatever it was they didn't care they, as, long, as long as they got publicity for Trump. So when the story came up, the, you know he had this affair with the McDougal for several months in 2006, uh, right after uh, the son or his son Baron was born. I think it lasted for about nine months. Oh, really? I didn't. I don't pay attention to it, but I never heard of that. He had an affair on Malika or whatever her name is. Yeah. Wow. On Melania. Yeah. Melania. Melania. So, so that's why the look on her face is always there. That look of yeah. You had an affair six months (laughs) after the baby was born. That's the look. That that explains it to me. Um, so, so he they paid the hundred and fifty thousand. Trump stiffed Pecker. He never paid him the hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Never. They wow. just stuck him with the bill. So now they had to pay. They had to pay Stormy Daniels one hundred and thirty thousand. And how did they get to the hundred and thirty thousand? Stormy wanted net a hundred thousand. The thirty thousand was for the lawyer. So. Trump and Wesselberg and Cohen all got together and said, how are we going to pay this so it doesn't look like we're paying the money out of the company? You know, we want to make it look like it's a legal tax deduction. So 
what uh, Cohen did. He used his line of credit and he, his home, on his home, and he paid $130,000 to, to Stormy Daniels. And they worked up a plan where he would get, uh, I think, 30000 a month for 13 months until he got paid the money. There was more money. Uh, also, when Trump became president, <clears throat> the year before Cohen's bonus was 150000 the next the next year when he was president, his bonus was cut to fifty thousand, and the Trump organization was making all kinds of money, and and Cohen was doing all kinds of work. So there was Cohen was pissed off at his his bonus been cut by two thirds. So Trump I think made it up to him, and so there was uh, the hundred and thirty thousand plus another two hundred and sixty thousand for whatever. So they had to figure a way. So they paid him 30,000 a month and it was deduct a tax deduction and, uh, for legal expenses. That's how they, they did it on the Trump organization. That's why he doesn't want his tax records. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want anybody to know all the stuff that went on in with the Trump organization over the years. So it's, it's just what you think it is. Yeah. What and, I'm curious is who's, who funds him? Is it Russia and if it is the banks in Russia, that could explain his allegiance to um, to Putin. Oh. Yeah, they were working on the Trump the the Trump Tower in Moscow, and that's how that's how Cohen got in trouble because it did, they denied they denied that they were working on it. He said they had no business in Russia, but they were working on it right right up through through the election, and. Uh, what they were planning on doing was building this big tower in, in Moscow and on the, they were going to, they were going to give Putin a $50 million apartment in Moscow. You know, for, wow. yeah. And yeah. the money, the, the money, uh, the, because of Trump's bankruptcies in the nineties, Fifty um, million dollars. You said fifty thousand. It's fifty million. I'll fifty bet. million. Yeah, fifty million dollar apartment. Yeah, for Putin. Uh, he 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 looked up to Putin because he thinks Putin is the richest man in the world. That he's worth a trillion dollars. That's oh. and you know once once he gets a, a bee in his bonnet, it stays there, just like he did with the birther and he did with the Central Park Five. It's in his brain. Doesn't change. So, it doesn't change. He he made hints to the fact last week that Obama was, wasn't uh, in order with his birth certificate. I yeah, mean, of course. He's just obsessive. Uh, can you yeah. give me? Can you predict an ending to all of this? Yeah, November third, a, a victory for Biden will put a stop to it, and hopefully, and they'll have two months to get for all the rats to jump off the si the ship and then they can burn all the records that uh, they need to cover up everything. Uh, right now they have uh, the guy that's working as his fixer is Bill Barr with all the stuff they put out. Oh, by the way, I just, I, just before I called you, there was a judge in Boston that ordered a preliminary injunction uh, about the United States Postal Service to stop the slowing down of the postal service, as you know, oh. it's a crime. It's a crime. It's a felony to slow down the post office. And he and DeJoy have been do working at it, and the and the four Republican board members on the postal service board have done everything in their power. So you know they stopped. They they dismantled the sorting machines. They uh, stopped the overtime. DeJoy said, well, I have the trucks leaving on time. Yeah, they may be leaving on time, but the mail isn't getting onto the trucks. They're staying on the docks. And there was, there was, a, guy in, there was a guy in L.A. Did a, did a test. They took 100 letters, and they mailed them from L.A. It took, on average, 11 days to get wherever they're going. That's how bad it is. My God. United States yeah. of America. Yeah. Incredible. We, we, Jerry, because yeah, of time, let's get to the candy store of life a little bit. And that uh, okay. for you and I is baseball, specifically uh, Bay Area baseball. 
is um, can you give us an update on how both the A's and the Giants are doing, what their chances are for the playoffs, and um, what most impressed you so far about the season and what most frustrated you or most well, frustrates you? Well, let's do the Giants first. The, the Giants and A's, I have uh, a three-game series starting tomorrow at the Oakland Coliseum. The the Giants uh, had a bad year last year. Bad, they've had bad three years. They hired, uh, they made a controversial move to, by hiring Gabe Kapler as their manager. Kapler had a lot of talent in Philadelphia, and he 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 just went 500 baseball. And people in Philadelphia thought he was a weirdo. He did some goofy things. And they hired him in San Francisco, and fans are saying, what the hell do the Giants do? We had Bruce Bochy for all these years. Couldn't they get someone better than than Kapler? But I think uh, Farhan Zaidi worked with Kapler when he was in the Dodger organization a few years back. So Kapler's come in, and what's happened is uh, they got a former Met, Wilma Flores, and was having a terrific season. They got Alex Dickerson, who's having a good season. They signed Mike Yastrzemski last year. Yastrzemski, the grandson uh, grandson of uh, Hall of Famer Carl Yastrzemski, had been in the Baltimore organization for a number of years and, and never got an opportunity. And he came to San Francisco and he found a home. And he's one of the leading players on the team. Then they they <clears throat> they have a bunch of gray beards in the infield. Evan Longoria, third base. Brandon Crawford at shortstop. Uh, they've got uh, <clears throat> at first base Brandon Belt, and they got Donovan Solano or, or Mauricio Dubon can play second base. And these guys are all coming through. Uh, Solano's hitting about three fifty. Belt, you know, Longoria. Belt's given them given them about five yeah. or six good solid years. He's at he's yeah. streaky, but um, comes to the end of the year, he's hitting two eighty with twenty five home runs, and um, he's yeah, and, and pretty decent. And, those, and that's what those three guys are doing. They're all hitting about two eighty, and they yeah. all have uh, seven, eight, nine home runs so far. So they're getting they're getting. They're getting a lot of run support. They're, they're a dangerous team. Uh, they brought up Joey Bart, the the 23 year old, the probable successor to uh, to Buster I'm Posey going at behind the plate. You know, Belt is a oh, free agent. Oh yes, at the end of the yes. Year. Belt Belt might be gone Man, at the end of the year as a free agent, and Posey would play first base. So that's probably the the Giants thinking right now. The problems that the Giants have is that their their pitching staff is not there yet. Uh, Jeff Samarja is up for the season. I was never a big fan of Samarja. He's he's not uh, he's barely a 500 pitcher. He does give him innings when he's healthy, but he just doesn't win a lot of games. Uh, their 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 ace is Johnny Cueto, and if Cueto's on his game, he still got some talent left, and he does very very well. Coming and, back from major surgery too, I like that. Yeah, they they picked up Drew Smiley and he had a good outing, and uh, but right now the uh, <clears throat> for this weekend series with the A's, they, they have yet to announce who's going to pitch the three games. They don't know, so we'll we'll have to see. I think they have Tyler Anderson is in the rotation, uh, Logan Webb. And Kevin Gaussman, Gaussman, the four, former Oriole, has pitched well, and uh, the A's will probably see him over the weekend. So you got to be careful with the Giants. You cannot take them lightly, and they're going to have to. And the A's are going to have to figure out a way to shut down their offense, which is perking, per, moving along pretty good. It's percolating pretty good right now. Now for the A's, the A's are having a terrific season. They're thirty-one and nineteen. They got the third best record in the American League. They're half a game behind the Rays for the second best record, and a game and a half back of the White Sox for the best record. Uh, the 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 Rays, everyone pegged the Yankees to be the best team in the American League, 
but the Yankees have had an unbelievable amount of injuries to their to their to the players and their starting rotation. Uh, they did get Garrett Cole, and he's performed well, but uh, the rest of the rotation is still a little shaky. Uh, They're starting starting to get healthy a little bit. The Yankees Stanton's right. back. He'll be back another yeah. week, and then he'll go out for three or four weeks. That's yeah. the way where he works. Yeah. But um, he he's got a better job yeah. than me. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's making he's making twenty or thirty million dollars a year <laughs> to yeah. sit on his rear end. Aaron Judge is back, and uh, and he's been having some uh, some uh, injury issues. But the Yankees will be a force. So the the A's, the A's right now are thirty one nineteen. They have ten games left. Their magic number is four. Any combination of A's wins or Astros losses will give them the American League West title. And of course, you know you don't have, with with eight teams in the playoffs, and they have that that three game uh, series to start it. Uh, the A's can't escape the wild card. They got to play a. They got to play somebody in the wild card series, and you know they haven't done well. And the the only time in the last twenty years they've only gotten out of the first round once, and that was in two thousand and six. And then they played the Tigers, and were swept by the Tigers that year. So hopefully they they'll do it. But they they got a they got a decent rotation. They got a couple of veterans. Mike Fires has been pitching very very well like lately. Uh, he won. He won yesterday. He won six innings. Uh, I think six. Yeah, I think it was. Didn't six he innings. make? Didn't he make some remark or or kneeled or something controversial? I remember him doing something at the beginning of the year. Fires. Uh, well, well, he 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 was in a lot of heat because he blew the whistle on the Astros on the whistle. He was the whistleblower. Oh, on the, on the sign stealing. Oh, yeah. that was it. Now yeah, I, so I don't remember it. But no. uh, he he's given the A's. He, he got off to, you know slow start, but he he's a six and two for the season, and he pitched very well yesterday. Uh, Sean Manaya has been pitching well. He got off to a slow start. They've got uh, they got uh, Frankie Montas. They've got the righty Frankie Montas. They got the lefty. Jesus Lazardo, they got Chris Bassett, and the six starters, Poots, Mike Miles. Poots got hurt again recently. Yeah, yeah, he has a shoulder problem. AJ Puck is, and I, I believe he's having shoulder surgery, so he might not even be back next year. Who knows? It takes uh-huh. a while from to recover. But uh, you remember Manaya <coughs> had it; he he came back. So it depends on the on the damage in the in the shoulder. So the jury's out on AJ Puck. But, yeah, but you got to root so, for these guys because they go through a lot in rehab. Oh yeah, and, oh do and, they? Uh, uh, that's why I was um, when Cueto came back, I'm delighted about that. You like to see success because one, even if they don't come back, they're going through the same thing. And the head game yeah. of it all, of uh, you know, you lose your livelihood, and you're 30 years old. Yeah. That's um, yeah. sure. that's it's crazy. Tough. And yeah. So, so anyway, uh, the the A's. Let's get back to the A's. Their their bullpen's been outstanding. Uh, Liam Hendricks is their closer, and he's got 13 saves so far. And and uh, the setup guys are Joaquin Soria, Lou Trevino. Uh, Usmero Petit, J.B. Wendelkin, T.J. McFarland. Uh, I let, oh, the, the lefty Diekman has been very good. So they 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 they're solid in the bullpen, and that that's re- pitching, as you know, is is so paramount for winning. They've got on the field, they've got Matt Chapman, their stellar third baseman, is out for the season. He's having hip surgery. And uh, hopefully he'll be back <clears throat> good as new <clears throat> for next year. Yeah, he's as good as they get. He and Arietta are about the best fielding third baseman in, in baseball. Oh, Arenado. 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 I, my yeah, pronunciation they both, they both, is pooked. Um, they both went to the same high school. Hard to believe. They know yes. each other. Yes. Um, 
two or three yeah, years Marcus, apart. Yeah, Marcus Semien is Marcus Semien is solid. Uh, second base, they made a nice trade with the with the Angels to get uh, Tommy Lastella. Uh, Tony Kemp can play second base. Chad Pinder can also play third base, but he hurt his hamstring, so he's out. And the A's made a uh, uh, nice free agent signing last week. They signed the former All Star Jake Lamb, who was with the Arizona D backs. Uh, Lamb was had only five hits with the D backs this year when they released him. And since he's been with the A's, he's been five for 11 in three or four games. Not bad. And he's playing Good. third. And he's playing third. He's also DHing. The wow. big disappointment. The big disappointment for the A's this year has been uh, Chris Davis. Chris Davis, who had three years of 40 and more home runs, was hurt last year in Pittsburgh, and he hasn't he hasn't regained his stroke. He only has two home runs. I think he's only played in about. He hasn't played in more than 20 or 22 games for the A's this year. He just has uh, two home runs and just a few RBI, and they're paying this guy about $18 million a year, and he's not he's not worth You know, the money. I could have almost seen that coming when he hit 241 with all those home runs. He was only hitting 241 each year. I think it was yeah. literally 241 three years in a row. And, um, you know, home runs are one thing, but you got to make contact. And when you're in a slump, yeah. if if you're not a contact hitter by nature, you're, you're just swinging and flailing as a power hitter. And um, yeah. it is a big disappointment. But Bean doesn't make that many mistakes. Let's give this guy credit. 20 years in a row, he's had very few teams. He hasn't won it all yet, but he's had few teams out of contention in the last 20 no, they, years. Yeah, the teams have been competitive. Uh, the So uh, they, they were down for a while after 2014, 15, 16, 17, but 18, 19, they won 97 games because he had, right. a, had a lot of young players. So And this year they're going to go be in the playoffs and they'll be competitive. Hopefully they'll be competitive. The big problem with the A's, you take a guy like Matt Olson. Matt Olson's got 13 home runs, but he was, he's only hitting a buck 90, and he strikes out a lot, and the team strikes out a lot, and they're winning games, but they're not they're not hitting with the consistency that the Giants are hitting. Most of the Giants are hitting 280. Most of the A's are hitting 230, 220, 240. I think Lestella is the highest guy on the, on. The, on the team with a 278 batting average. Robbie Grossman, who was hot early in the season, is hitting about 250. Mark Canna has been, he strikes out. He, I wish he was a little more consistent. So, so they. How about they Lord is in the center field, though? Well, Laureano was off to a good start. Uh, Ramon Laureano. Laureano, and, not Lord is. <laughs> He's been hit by a pitch 10 or 11 times. And in the Houston series, remember, he got hit by a pitch. It was the third time he was hit by a pitch in the series. And then he got taunted by the coach on the bench, and he lost lost his cool, and he got suspended for three games. He hasn't been the same player since he came back. He's hitting about 205. He was normally a 280 hitter. So he's hitting 205. Semyon's hitting 232. He hit about 280 last year. Uh, in the outfield, uh, in right field, Stephen Piscotti is hurt right now. So Canna's playing right. Grossman's playing in left. You have Lamb at third base. So Listella will play third. Semin is short. Camper Listella at second. Olsen at first. Uh, Sean Murphy is, coming, is, is starting to hit. He's got, I think, six home runs. And he's hitting about 240, 250, 257, I think, the last time I looked. So he's doing a good job, but they're not getting the hits in bunches. You know how they like they use the expression "move the line," or right. or you have keep it going. They can't keep it going. They haven't been able to do that, and with they're not doing well with runners in scoring position. So that means they're not getting the key hits, and everyone's trying to hit home runs, and if they're not hitting home runs, you know yeah. they're gonna they're. 
they'll they'll make it to the playoffs, but they may not make it past the first or second round. They can be shut down. Yeah. Um, Hey, Jerry, time's got us. You're terrific. Um, Keep them flying. Would you stay healthy? Yeah, i just like to comment on, I know you're a big Mets fan, and who could forget the 1969 Mets and Tom Seaver. Tom oh, Seaver yeah. you know, rest in, left, rest us, in peace. left us last week. And he was, I, I just remember his delivery with his knee dragging just about an inch off the ground, and he had that power pitch. And I remember when the Mets traded him to Cincinnati and how New York was in an uproar. uproar. How could you trade Tom Terrific to Cincinnati? You know. Oh, I and remember it well. It was a oh. horrible day, horrible day. Um, and then the and same then, day they got I'm, rid of Kingman as well, yeah. by the way. That, that was yeah. um, a massacre. M. Donald Grant. At the yeah. advice, and it uh, showed you how much Dick Young, who was a sports writer and a columnist um, for the news, how much power he had in influencing the team and um, just making a case for him uh, that was a case against him that put him in a bad light. And uh, it was. It was disastrous. Hey, Jerry, you're old enough to remember who Tom Seaver's delivery was patterned after and who he reminded everybody of when he first came up. You're an American League guy, so you not may not have uh, thought of Robin Roberts. But when I think of Seaver, I think of... Oh, yeah. Uh, you mentioned the low delivery drop and um, yeah. drop and gun or whatever the hell it's called. Um, but he died much too early. They're ravished by Lyme's disease and, um, and Alzheimer's. And, um, and then yeah. I think what did him in was COVID-19. COVID. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So he had a trifecta going against him. You brought yes. up Robin Roberts. Boy, I, you know, I remember him in 1950 with the Whiz Kid Willies. Whiz, Phillies. Phillies. Whiz Kid <laughs> Phillies. Yeah, with Kurt Simmons, <laughs> Kurt Simmons and those guys. And the, yeah. the greatest, the great, the third baseman with the greatest nickname ever in baseball. Granny Hamner. Oh, uh, well, Willie, Willie Puddinghead Jones. Putting head Jones, yes. Granny Hamner was in that lineup too, if I remember. Yeah, they were great. I think uh, it was Del Richie, Ennis, Richie Ashburn. Richie Ashburn. Richie Ashburn. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yes, they were quite. And Carl Sawaski and those. Um, was another catcher that um, I, with a great I name. Think, I think uh, George Sisler's kid. Uh, Dick Sisler was on the uh, 1950 Wiz Kids. Yes, he hit a home run. I think he hit a home run that um, helped beat them. Beat the Dodgers. Or, yes. Beat the Dodgers. Yeah. In the playoff game. But, but Robin Roberts, in one year, made made 39 starts. He completed 26. Wow. Can you imagine wow. that? Hey, there are guys today that can, that don't have 26 career complete games, let alone um, um, it's a different world, different world. Um, I'll ask you one final question. How are you adapting to the putting on the runner at second base in extra innings? Michael Duca gave us a little lesson statistically how that works. But are you having a hard time getting by that? And are you having a hard time adjusting to seven inning games? Uh, they're playing 60 damn games. If they can't play nine innings for crying out loud. It just, yeah. Um, uh, I'm okay with the, with the guy on second base to start the inning. Uh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to score runs, but, 
you, you're not going to have 14 or 15 inning games. It'll usually be over by 10th or 11th inning. So I don't have a problem with that. And I know they want to get the players off the field. Uh, but I did the doubleheader between the A's. I covered the games uh, Monday between the A's and the Mariners. And for, uh, I mean, the game is over so quick. In the game that the Mariners won, they went, They only went to play six innings. They didn't have to finish the seventh inning. They were ahead. The game was over. So oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you, you're just missing something because – the way the A's have been playing this year, they score runs in the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth innings. They they come from behind, and they didn't have the opportunity. So when they fell behind, the game was over. And good, uh, very good point. Writing it made made life easier uh, to be done with it. Okay, game's over. I don't have to. I don't have that extra time uh, to watch the game and then pull out. Uh, to write the game summaries was much easier to do it from for a writer. But now, are player, you doing it from the press box, or do you have a set up at home? No, I do it at home. I I, I bought a scorecard book. Uh, I I get the games. I have uh, uh, with my TV system. I can get the games on TV on my computer. So I sit at the computer and I keep score, and I and uh, I I write as they go along, as they score and and things happen in the game, I I have a sheet of paper, I can do it. And then when the game is over, I, I write the story. Uh, So it's done. And I'll, I'll try and listen to Bob Melvin's uh, press conference after the game, get some notes, uh, some quotes and notes from, from Bob after the game, but it's much easier a seven inning games rather than a nine inning game. But that's what they're doing. I, I do not want to see, I don't want to see these changes in the future. I don't. I don't want a, a runner on second base to start the tenth inning, and I don't and want. A do you not game. miss the leagues, National League, American League, all that stuff? The significance well, of I, the World Series. Um, it's just. I, I like. I I've been a proponent of the DH, and I've enjoyed watching it. My argument is. And I know the people in the National League say, well, it's not baseball. The pitcher isn't pitching. And, and uh, I like the double switch and all that. My, To me, you still have to get 27 outs to win the game. There's just – and I think it's much harder with better with a, poor, a guy going up four times to hit for the pitcher than having a guy go, going up and hitting a, a – 071, maybe getting one hit in every uh, 16 at bats. But I know people like it, and but it's it really it, with the DH and it's all in the minor leagues, it's all in college. Just make it uniform in my mind. And I know the purists, the National League people, will say, no, you can't do it. Well, if they're doing it this year, it really doesn't seem to make a difference. But in my well, mind, that's my my opinion. Okay. I, uh, you know, I'm a, an L purist, so I will tend to disagree. Well, that's okay. Reasonable, pe- I know. reasonable people. Uh, <laughs> but if you disagree, we're both wearing masks when we go out. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> we're not disagreeing <laughs> on that. So let, uh, and but as you I, say, reasonable people. But if I were Trump, I would wreak havoc on you. And come after you and just drip up all your baseball cards. What do I know? Yes. All right, my friend. I yeah. always so, enjoy your company, even if it's only over the phone. But um, this is nice. We have a, a good friendship, Jerry. I'm blessed. What's nice about being in the baseball fraternity is that I've met so many people people and you have met so many people in, in your conversations or, or with people around the country and my meeting and by my being able to go to the press box and meet guys uh, from the different teams and uh, the different broadcasters guys like Jim Palmer who's a Hall of Famer and a broadcaster Bert Blylevin, Ken Harrelson I met Vin Scully uh, and it and it's just, it's just. Uh, I feel so privileged 
uh, to be able to do that. And, of course, as a kid, I never thought that anything like that would ever happen. And here it is, uh, much o- as I am much older now, being able to enjoy it, and I don't take it for granted. And I know you don't take it for granted because you get to talk to all these people who have, who have either played or been reporters or broadcasters or just just regular guys who well, have Coaches, have scouts, um, it's just yeah. uh, a wonderful experience for me. It, as you say, we're not getting any younger, so this tops off um, an interesting, wonderful life for both of us. Yeah, um, it's great. I love it. it. It is great. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Comfortably Zone Radio Network. Um, while I'm thinking of it, do us both a favor, Jerry and I, if you're listening out there. Box up some lightly used or new children's books and uh, take them down to the Head Start program. Kids need um, need to read. They, by nature of the beast, they need a head start. So get them books, get them interested, uh, get them school ready, have them develop a passion. And by so doing, little by little, we could change the world. Um and make it a better place for the kids to grow up. Be well, be nice to each other, hug each other. And uh, again, thank you, Jerry. We'll be back as soon as we are. Adios. Bye-bye. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.